la tiene Marabona, lo marcan dos, pisa la pelota Marabona, armaría por la derecha del camino del fútbol oficial. Messi, 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 Eastbourne Borough is located in Priory Lane in Langney. Priory Lane Stadium has an official capacity of 4,151. The main stand houses a director's suite and main sponsor's executive suite, plus an announcer's box and press area. The dugouts are situated in front of the main stand. Hi, I'm Tommy Woodrington, manager of Eastbourne Borough Football Club. Um, I expressed an interest in, in the job. Um, after a couple of conversations, one with the previous manager, funnily enough, um, and then I was phoned by somebody at his and uh, suggested I would come down for a chat, which I did, um, like what, what I heard, and then uh, made the decision to come to Eastbourne. Well, obviously any club that's already been higher than the level they're at currently should have the potential to, to go back there. Um, I want to coach and manage at the highest possible level and I've coached at this level and above um, and I want to take this club back up there so ultimately I saw the potential to go back to a higher division eventually. Whenever I'm asked that I always find it very very difficult, five years is a hell of a long time um, I'd like to say we'd be firmly ensconced in at least one league above but you know uh, I mightn't be here in five years' time. It's a, it's a hell of a long time to be a manager of one football club. But what I would say is, I'm sure Eastbourne Borough will continue um, long after me, the players, the supporters are all been and gone. You know, and, and it's it, it's the foundation of the community, I think, and uh, it's a very it's a very stable football club. So all I could all I would say is, I'd, I'd hope it, it's hope uh, it's it's still prospering and doing well at whatever level it's at. Langley Football Club was founded in 1964 and entered into the Eastbourne and District Football League, competing in Division 2. It was not until the end of the 2001 season the club made one of the most crucial decisions in the club's history, the change of name to Eastbourne Borough FC. In recognition of the past and continued association with the Langley Sports Club, the club badge and colours remained unchanged. Um, Simon Johnson and I play midfield, anywhere in midfield, centre mid all right. I uh, progressed through the youth from early age, about 12 years old, and worked up to the under 18s, and then got noticed playing for England schoolboys by Gary Wilson, the old manager, and from there just played from the first team since. Um, I'd like to do both, really. I coach at the minute for Borough, so it'd be nice to work for both sides for about 10 years. That'd be nice. Um, hopefully in the league above, pushing sort of to go full time as well. Whilst football has remained at the major sporting focus at the club as a result of the success of Eastbourne Borough, it has gradually become the hub of the local community and one of the most progressive organisations in the town. Uh, my name's Lee Peskett and I uh, uh, work on the website and I look after the media at Eastbourne Borough Football Club, um, especially on match days. Well, as far as looking after the website is I uh, write the match reports, I do all the news items uh, with regard to what goes on not only at the football club but also with regard to Langley Sports Club. That's information that's fed to me by various people, Tommy the manager, some of the players, um, the commercial management, the CEO. Um, I try to get that on the website as soon as I can and promote it via Facebook or Twitter. Um, I also have to write the match reports for games and also put other various pieces of information around about for the other sites so that can be the under 18s and the reserves occasionally. But most of the focus is on the, um, on the first team and the commercial activities at the club. 
Uh, well, obviously, uh, modern day football and the way that the internet is, is uh, um, people get to hear about football clubs, not so much these days through the newspaper, but more through um, the internet and, and social media. So the idea is, is to get the na club's name out and about, to promote the idea of games, promote, uh, promote other activities that go on at the club, uh, the it's a knockout during the summer, etc. But also to provide people with information uh, about games that have been, games that are coming, uh, try and encourage uh, people to come to the games, etc. Give them information about what they may have missed. Uh, but it's basically just get the club's name and about and known uh, around about the town and the wider environment. Uh, I don't know if it could be used to make the fan club's fan base bigger. It uh, round the edges, maybe small numbers. Is that obviously social media can go worldwide. We certainly pick up interest from people that are ex from Eastbourne in places like Canada, Australia and elsewhere. But as far as their attendance at the club, it would probably only be on the occasions. Um, it's really about making sure that the club's name is, is fresh in people's minds, uh, the achievements, what they're going through at the moment in order to try and encourage people to come here. Because the paper has obviously got a wider range of sports to cover, etc. So it may not always give us the time and attention that maybe we feel we deserve. Uh, I probably will be. My, uh, my family has been associated with the club for 30 odd years um, and I'm Eastbourne and Langley specific, born and bred, so I don't see myself moving on anywhere. The, the only reason I do what I do is for this football club. It's not, it's not a job as such, as you know, we're all volunteers. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to still be doing what I'm doing if the club still want me. You've got to be, um, you've got to have a lot of self-belief and a lot of, um you've got to be honest. Um, sometimes you've got to wear two faces in the same conversation with people. Um, but ultimately, I think you've got to love love the game, which is what I do. Um, you've got to know the game, which I feel I do. Um, but there's a lot of interpersonal skills needed, I think. People people just see somebody in a suit or somebody in a tracksuit at the side of the pitch, ball in the odd uh, at the odd official and shouting a couple of things on the side of the pitch is a lot more to it than that, you know. Especially the lower down you go, or certainly at this level anyway, uh, I've, I have to manage budgets and I have to, you know, dish out what I think this person's worth as opposed to that person and I've got to attract people to the football club. And all these things do take probably elements that you would never really think about, you know, so you need to be decent at maths for one. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, you've got, you've got to be able to stand by your decisions, you know, at the end of the day, it's probably one of the very few jobs I can think of where actually it's not your performance that dictates whether you remain in the job or you get better or you get a better, better job because of it. it. You're putting literally your life in other people's hands, which is probably why you see a lot of guys with a lot of grey hair or no hair. <laughs> Challenging, not in a difficult way, challenging in that the challenges it brings, yeah? And I think that's probably what attracted me to, to the job. You know, I've always, being in football since I had literally within days of me leaving school, that's all I've known. Um, I'm saying I couldn't do anything else, but I wouldn't choose to do anything else if, if that was the case. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to progress from being a player to a coaching of kids first of all and then you know moving into player player coach and then manager so it's what it's something I want to continue to do and like I said I want to I want to do it as, as long as I can and as at the best level I can it's sort of a family club everyone's together there's no sort of backstabbers really at Borough it's all like a family run club really you know it is and, I, and this isn't I'm not being soppy or anything like that. So even when I wasn't here, there was something different about Eastbourne Borough Football Club when I came as a manager and a player. Um, I just feel like the, the general fabric of the club is different to a lot of a lot of other clubs I've been at. You know, literally, the building was built by the people who run the football club, and that that in itself is unique. Uh, I wouldn't say it's particular to this club, but non-league football in general is is fantastic. I think. I've got somebody on my staff, still on the playing staff, who's been here in 20 years, played nearly a thousand games. You know, Dan Baker. So it is, it is a very special football club in that way. And I do think, whilst it's probably the newest club in, in Eastbourne, it's definitely the biggest football club in this this area. Um, and if you go that way and point towards Gillingham, that's the next biggest club there. Other than Brighton and Crawley, out of the football league, it's certainly the biggest 
football club in a, in a very big big area, it's a big county, so six in, but even in Hampshire, I think that this is the biggest club that there is around here. And it, currently, um, and definitely this season, we finish higher than anybody else around the area, which is what we want to do because we feel we are that, that uh, the biggest club. It's all about the location, it's all about your locality, it's about, um, it, it's not its complete opposite to sort of Premier Football. It's all about um, volunteers doing something for, for yourselves and for the people around you. Specific to this football club is, is that there's a group of people that have been doing this for a long, long time. Um, they've built it up from, from a, a ploughed field, from a, 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 you know, a wasteland into what it is today. Uh, and to be part of that currently and in the past and hopefully in the future is, is something that's um, important to me and important to my family.